There is no repeal from death. There is no repeal from death. How can there be a debate whether capital punishment is ethical and justifiable? I just don't understand how there can be. When you speak about the death penalty, one of the most predictable retorts one can receive is, you would not have the stance you do if someone you loved was murdered. My life has been particularly eventful. One of the things I unfortunately witnessed or was in the immediate area when the incident occurred was the murder of several loved ones. The only reason for me sharing this private information is to make my point definitively. The pain felt from the action of another who has robbed you of your loved one is beyond description. Yes, there was a part of me who wanted to see the eye for an eye justice implemented. This was my emotional distress and grief speaking. This was not me in my settled, clear thinking state. Soon after some of the original sting began to leave and before a emotional dulling overcame me, I knew, I knew this did not change my outlook. Lawful premeditated killing cannot provide justice for a human life which was taken. Why surrender to emotional reasoning when one knows that the justice system is flawed? So you realize there are wrongful convictions, yet you support the death penalty? What is it within you that makes this okay? Travel back to 1973. Now, fast forward to the future, to the now. During your trip, there were 130 death row inmates that were convicted by eyewitness testimony. Later, they were exonerated, many cleared with the use of DNA evidence. Do not forget, we are dealing with fallible people who make life and death decisions. Are you willing to falsely assume that personal bias and cognitive distortions does not contribute to the process? Things like race, class, gender, previous affiliations, religious standing, etc. does not influence others? People are only concerned with facts and truth, right? Okay. According to the Death Penalty Information Center from 1973 to 1999, there was an average of 3.1 exonerations per year from 2000 through 2007. There has been an average of 5 exonerations per year. Now you are probably looking for me to say, being that I am wearing black skin, Black bodies are always linked to criminality regardless of facts and truth that states otherwise. There is indeed truth within this statement, but it is not a true statement within its own right. This cannot be watered down due to polaric thinking. Reducing something to only one component of the big picture does not serve to provide clarity. But examining the isolated component is normally worth our examination time. Should I broach the concern that detention is expensive? Maybe like many things in our world, does expense contribute to the appeal for capital punishment? Some, no doubt, see it as being a cost-effective action when compared with the cost of life imprisonment. After all, the prison industrial complex is not solely about rehabilitating prisoners, producing a form of punishment, and separating them, the criminals, from us, the law-abiding citizens, and those not caught from offending the rule of law. It is a business. There are fat cats who are profiting from crime. 
especially in privatized prison systems. The money is in the number of repeat offenders. Prison is proving to be a revolving door where the poor and the disenfranchised usually keep returning. These people are, in effect, producing the supply of profit-producing customers and cheap labor. Next is what is a humane method in putting a human down? Well, buckle up. It will be a long ride before this highly subjective topic can and will be tackled. We would have to consider belief constructs, culture, ethics, education, occupation, and indoctrination, personal bias, among other factors that influence. No matter how much you argue, killing another outside of self-defense is not humane. The only exception to the rule which I can think of currently is assistant suicide. I do not consider assistant suicide murder, assuming the person is sane, not mentally or emotionally overtaxed, and has thoughtfully considered the responsibility to ending their existence. I would find this especially valid if the person was suffering from a terminal illness and was wasting away. Though I would not want to participate, I would find it humane if asked to do so. This is not a decision that simply should be determined by what the mob or majority of society currently believes to be moral. Belief should not be a consideration. This should be about what is fair and what is true. I will not deprive an individual of the opportunity to benefit from the evolution of law from new technology, or new ways to implement old technology, and new evidence that may warrant the reversal of a conviction. Official homicide is not a legitimate position for the government. I refuse to think we can create multiple methods to kill our fellow man, to eliminate privacy, and to poison the populace, but we are incapable of finding a method of punishment that does not endorse killing to solve social problems. A few facts about Troy Davis. One, no direct physical evidence linked Troy Davis with the murder of the police officer. Two, seven of nine witnesses recanted and the rest were suspect. Three, his last words were used supporting the family while declaring his innocence. Four, a stay of execution was denied because Congress passed a law limiting its power to stay executions when there had been prior appeals. Now, an opinion. You are guilty, even if there is doubt of your guilt. The probability of fair treatment under the law is proportional to your 1. Contacts 2. Class Ranking 3. Minority and Gender Status And let's not forget, a judge can predispose him or herself and alienate their reason from presented rational concerns. As if we did not have enough to consider, we must acknowledge the racial component without limiting our focus. This is bigger than race. It is about justice for all. However, if you are going to acknowledge the racial component, then let's do so and move forward. Is there a system of white capital supremacy that still exists within America? If it does, then what contribution does it make towards unfair due process regarding minorities or various other outcasts. We must be vigilant in holding all parts of the process under careful scrutiny. The process of justice is not more important than the person who is accused of a crime. The blindness of justice means the process is to be free, free from shackles of bias, deception, corruption, and self-interest. Uh, uh, your state has executed 234 death row inmates, more than any other governor in modern times. Have you... 
Have you struggled to sleep at night um, uh, uh, with the idea that any one of those might have been uh, innocent? No, sir. I've never struggled with that at all. The state of Texas has a uh, very thoughtful, a very clear process in place of which when someone commits the most heinous of crimes against our citizens. They get a fair hearing. They go through an appellate process. They go up to the Supreme Court of the United States if that's required. But in the state of Texas, if you come into our state and you kill one of our children, you kill a police officer, you're involved with another crime and you kill one of our citizens, you will face the ultimate justice in the state of Texas, and that is you will be executed. What do you make of... Uh... What do you make of that dynamic just happened here, the uh, mention of the execution of 234 people drew applause? I think Americans understand justice. I think Americans are clearly, in the vast majority of, of, of cases, supportive of capital punishment.